Father, tonight it is my prayer that you be exalted, Lord God, in your word tonight. That those that will hear your word would be freed from any kind of bondage that they could possibly be experiencing. I pray, Father God, that we all, Lord God, come to the understanding, Lord God, that it's your time, Lord God, and that we are walking in a time, Lord God, where we need you so bad, Lord God. But there are so many distractions that your word tonight open the eyes of those who want to see, open the ears of those who want to hear, that it touch the hearts of those who have a pliable heart and is soft and it can your word can get there. Break the callous heart, Lord God. Lord God, give everybody what they need. For you know where everybody is, Lord God. You know exactly where we are. And we thank you for tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and ask that your Holy Spirit will take over this service in every aspect of it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. Um, happy Wednesday. <laughs> me today has been a good day and I hope it's been as good for you and I say that um, I work in the school we didn't have kids today so I was able to kind of um, stay out the way didn't have a whole lot of uh, <laughs> things causing me to <laughs> causing me to be uh, that person I can be at times and so I was able to get with God today and what I mean is that when Felicia taught Sunday, she said that, um, you know, she didn't want to have to come up and, and like take off the mask. And, that. and I understood that because, you know, having having two natures is real. And having that 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 fallen nature and having to go out into the world and having to be able to having to deal with things that encounter, it's very hard to walk. And that which I know that I should walk in, and I know about you. Maybe you, you can you can just you just flow, you know. And you know, some people can, you know, I guess. Or maybe they're not being honest, but I know that it is always a task for me to be that light that I'm called to be. And the reason I know because I'm often convicted. You know, I'm often convicted by the Holy Spirit. It convicts me no soon as I um not where I should be in my in my um response to um things I may encounter um and so today wasn't wasn't as bad because I didn't have the kids who we all know kids can kind of pull that, that 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 side of you out that you've been working on so to speak because I don't want to say the real you because this is the real me yes indeed this is absolutely the real me that you get every time I come before you and that's why I be transparent because I don't want you to believe that I got anything cranked up and nor should you. You know, I go through, you know, the days and have to fight off all the demons and the thoughts that you two have, that you, you fight off. Um, so um, we've been talking about um, Cairo's time, God's time opposed to Kronos time, which is, you know, the time of the world. Years ago, our pastor Deron was talking to us and he would say frequency. And this is kind of like the same, what frequency we on, the same kind of thing. But being in Cairo's time today at work was, 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 was good for me. I could be on God's time. I can be in God's time because I didn't have a lot of distractions. But what was, what was, what, what was happening too as well though, I I had I had pulled myself away from the crowd. So I took myself all the downtime. We had so much downtime today. We had one in service um in uh in the morning. And after that, we just had a lot of downtime and we had another training in the in the eat in the afternoon for about 45 minutes. But what I'm telling you is that I had to be intentional about not sitting around. The conversation is not sitting around um, just being idle in a space um, and actually being intentional about getting into God's word, reading some, you know, reading the, the literature books that we have or, or, or just getting in God's space and being on Cairo's time and not being in the world. 
and not being in yet um a reality TV time because a lot of times in the offices and in different places where we work, people tend to speak on these things. And look, I I these are the same people that that tell me you know they believe in Christ and and all this, and I I don't doubt that they uh want to believe in Christ, but believing in Christ looked like something. So there's no judgment on my part. I'm just saying what I had to do today. I had to be intentional. I had to be intentional about going into this other room, taking my my books and go sit and read and just sit and and just think about God. Uh, for several reasons. One was because tonight I knew I had to come before you and I had to make sure that I wouldn't have to get up on here and be doing a whole bunch of repenting and oh my God, I mean come before you with a bunch of lies or false. So it was it, it was work. It was work because one time I had taught. And I and I talked about it. And that is, we we have to realize that, you know, that thing that the adversary gets to attach itself to that is in us. You know, it said when Jesus was in and, and Pastor Jill told on um used the scripture where Jesus was in the wilderness, and it said that the adversary left him for a more opportune time. I Many would come back when Jesus probably was hungry or, or was dealing with something. And so when we find ourselves stress hungry and, and going through a lot of things, you know, you'll find out a lot of times that you that's when you get confronted with certain things. But being in Cairo's time is being on God's time, meaning having a God thought for me. Cairo's time for me is God's timing. It has everything to do with to understand God's timing for everything for me to do with understanding what God is trying to show me about me. So Cairo's time is an inside thought for me. It's an inside out thought. It's not just like, you know, something that it's, it can, for me, it's an inside out thought. It's the only way I can explain it. Meaning I'm trying to focus on what I believe God delights in, the things God loves. Because when I'm thinking about them things, when I ponder on them things, I think the scripture says some, think on these things, you know, and it talks about all the good things to think on. That puts me in Cairo time. That puts us in Cairo's time. So one of the uh, things we was talking about as we do a little review here was divine delay. I had wrote down divine delay, the time between the promises of God and their reveal. And in between that time, I had wrote down, uh, <laughs> scream, my, my flesh screams, abandon ship. And I think Pastor Jill said, that's when we do a premature bailout. So in that divine delay, I would submit to, to us all that we are in divine delay many, many times, don't realize it, label it as something else. And in, in that, now we are moving out of, out of Cairo's time and into our own time. Um, um, uh, today we were, uh, <laughs> we had a brain, uh, a doctor that deal with the brain, she was talking, and a lot of the stuff she was talking about was, and I'm going I'm to try to use, I'm going to use this word, prescriptive and descriptive in terms of what she was saying about the brain. Um, and she has all these diagnoses and everything, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking spiritually, I'm just thinking like, you know, God, our kids get labeled, but God can, you know, God, God is in control. And so when we're in Cairo's time, and when in that divine delay, the divine delay can look chaotic sometimes. The divine delay can absolutely look chaotic sometimes. So you, I mean, for me, I might be like, man, this, this ain't, this ain't Cairo's time. This ain't no divine delay. This is a mess. I don't know what's going on. But no, 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 no. When we sit still, when we take the time to relax and actually, you know, think about the things of God. Think, some, think about the word of God. But now this is hard for someone who don't spend their time with God, who don't have a relationship and who do sound bites, who just like see a scripture or something like that. This Kairos time for me is going to be experienced because I'm ex I'm literally intentional about being in a relationship with God. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand. I'm going to understand his timing. That's number one. And I'm going to tell you, when you're in a relationship with God, it's both ways. And it's, it's an inside out thing. And that's, again, you know, our ministry is that we change his lives from the inside out while leading people into a growing relationship with Christ. And so the divine delay, the time between the promises of God and their reveal, 
my flesh screams abandon ship. I'm pretty sure yours do too. You don't, you know, you, you, you do want the quick fix. The world has it for us. The quick fix, the world has it for us. If we want a quick fix, we can go. We can, and we can always find a way to fix whatever's going on with us because we have a lot of, we had a lot of practice. I know I did. I had a lot of practice at it. So in trying to, to learn to exist in this divine delay, what it causes me to do, I have to make sure that I'm spending time with God. I have to make sure I'm turning to his word daily. I have to make sure that I'm meditating on his word. I have to study God's truth. We um we we we've been we had three books presented to us by our Pastor Jill. And you know, for me, since I've been here, every book, and Felicia spoke on it Sunday too, every lesson, I mean, it's just been this is just life has just been so great because I've been able to hold on to these teachings. Why I really want to put an emphasis on the fact that these books were presented to us because I don't know how many people have or have not got or read the books, but if you have, great, God bless you, and I and I and I know God will bless you when you spend the time to read it and put stuff. But the ones who have not, who have not, and you know who you are, and if, if the spirit convicting you, it, it, I'm telling you. We can't talk about wanting God's truth, wanting to be in God's time and all that when God placed the tool, the things that we can use that will put us right where we need to be when it comes to his word. It's like, you know, drowning and somebody throw you to what they, that, that thing where they say they, they threw you a, a, a life preserver, but you was waiting on a boat or something like that. I, I'm telling you, it's, it's just incredible. So them books, um, Spiritual Discernment, beginning to pray, sit, walk, stand. These books are all speaking to something that I promise you, every individual that will hear this message or have heard any messages that we've had in the past, um, in the last three series we've done, it's going to hit you right where you are. And it's going to be a revelation for you. And it's going to free you up from a lot of bondage that you could possibly be walking in. The other thing that we do when I want to be on God's time, Cairo's time, I have to believe the word. I have to believe the word. Believing the word looks like something. I think in Hebrew, um, believe, um, it means to, you, you got to do too. You, you can't believe is an action word. It, it, it's, it's, you, you believe something, then it should, the, what you believe should show in your behavior. If that makes sense, it should show in your behavior. And so um, when we say we believe in God, what that look like? To, what did that look like in your day to day? Because this is like, that's why I love um, <laughs> the 12 step program. It's one, it's one day at a time. One day at a time, one step at a time, one thing at a time. And so in my day to day, what I'm believing. And today I chose to believe that, Lord, you're going to be with me. You're going to help me see me through this day. It was a lot of distractions. I could have, uh, I could have allowed things to connect to me that was going on all around and through the building and all that. But I did not, I was intentional about getting with God. And that's something we got to make sure we do. We got to make sure we turn to his word daily, meditate on his word, study his truth and believe. The other thing we got to do, we got to obey and apply. We have to obey and apply. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I understand that, man. I, I, I really do. But we must apply. And it, it you, you might be on an island by yourself. I can be, I'm going to tell you, sometimes it's just so lonely for me when I think about um, relationships of the past or how I, how I was, um, you know, everybody likes being around, you know, I have friends, this, that, and the other. However, for me right now, I'm telling you, I'm happy in my space. Uh, I had a friend say something to me not too long ago. You can get back to your happy space. Man, my happy space is all the time. <laughs> I'm serious. My happy space is all the time. And I think my happy space comes from having gratitude for what God has done. And I'm telling you, when we can get to and understand and be grateful for what God has already done in our life, and we exalt him in our prayers and in our, our, our intentions that are deep down in our soul. See, Felicia, I'm telling you, man, the service was so good Sunday. But the service has just been a blessing. All, all these last three series have just been a blessing. Go back and look at them. But Sunday, she said, she said that um, she was just talking about how 
you know, it was so hard for her to get over a space that she was in and how God knew her. That's my quote. She said, God knew exactly where, she, he, he knows exactly where I'm at. He knew exactly what I was thinking about. And I want y'all to know something. God knows exactly where we are. So the thought of, um, I used to say, uh, God, you know, I'm not ready right now. I'm this, that, and the other, whatever. Before I got into service, I was into ministry, really willing and wanting to be in God's presence and God to transform my life. I would make up these reasons. And I know some of you have. And I know some of you still do. You make up reasons because, I, I mean, hey, it's just what we did. We we think it's a, it's a time, you know, we're going to get something together before the time. No. It happens, it happens, it happens as we sit with God, as we walk with God, as we listen and as we apply, obey and apply. Then the other thing is to share his word. Share his word. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's easy to say. But for me, because of the world and um, I don't know, just not having courage. I'm going to be honest with you. Just not having courage and not to have courage. For me, that was being a coward, Dave. That was being a coward. But sharing his word. Why? Because I would tell myself certain things. Man, nobody want to hear that, man. I'm this, that, and the other. So I would tell myself some things. So being in Cairo's time and walking in Cairo's time, recognizing Cairo's time. Cairo's time for me, I think, is, 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 is I, like I said, it's that time. It's, it's, it's that time when God is appointed. It's a God appointed time. Cairo's time. It's his time. And I don't know, I'll keep getting this thought about, that's all the time, David, <laughs> you know, but are you in, intentional about being in this time? Do you recognize God in your space at this time when you're being confronted by two things, like these two pictures behind me, you know, that little space in the middle, that's me or whatever, you know, who gonna, what's going to happen? Which way are you going to go, left or right? I remember I said, think about the, about the wolves, you know, two wolves are vying for my soul. Which one's going to win? One that I feed the most. What you mean feed, Dave? The one I sit with, the one I give the most attention to. That's the one going to win. So being, being in Cairo's time has everything to do with me being intentional about wanting, wanting to be in Cairo's time. All right. So the first bullet that I had was divine delay. Divine delay, the time between the promises of God and the reveal happening. And I had wrote, you know, my flesh screams abandoned ship from the inside out. All right, then um, uh, something else was said in one of the shows, I don't know who said it, but it said, recognize the impulses of my flesh. The impulses of my flesh, you know, <laughs> the flesh be trying to tell you to do a whole lot of things throughout the day. When somebody say something to you or catching an attitude or anything like that, you know, you being impulsive and just um, being emotional about things and not really actually sitting with God and allowing God's spirit to move us. We move on our own time, our own learned behaviors, learned behaviors. And the scripture tells us we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And everything keeps coming back to do we believe the scriptures? Because if we believe them, then we will do what they say. God said, if you love me, then you would obey me. Um, um, that was the second bullet. It says, recognize the impulses of my flesh, meaning that natural spirit. It says, know when the flesh is speaking to us. So it ain't, so it can't speak through us. I, I don't know who said it, but said, no one in the flesh is speaking to us so that it can't speak through us. You know, out there cussing people out, fussing at people, talking like, and Pastor Jill used this one, um, go get your manager, <laughs> you know? Okay, you know, for what? You know, somebody gonna lose their job or something like that. I'm, I'm, I've done it. I've done it. My wife will tell you, I've done it. My wife, she don't, she don't play that though, especially without eating. And I'll be there and something go wrong. And I'll be like, oh, look, can I talk to your manager? Or when you just, or if I confront a, a waitress or somebody, like that, Tina will not eat in that restaurant after that. She's not eating. <laughs> she just won't eat. And I understand her reasons, <laughs> but that was fun. All right. So um, know, know when the flesh is speaking to us so it can't speak through us. All right. Um, I don't know. I saw this. I heard it. It's a scripture. I've been trying to find a scripture. I couldn't find it, though. It says Satan couldn't find anything inside of Yeshua like him. Can we say the same?
can we say, I know it ain't, it ain't like the scripture don't say exactly what I said, but it has something to do with Satan couldn't find anything like him in him. And I, I'm, I'm almost certain we were talking about Yeshua um, when he was tempting Christ, but I'm not for sure. Research it. But I'm saying when we're walking in our day to day, you know how say you know, it says the adversary waits to uh, waits for an opportune time or prowls around and waits to see who he could devour. Well, you know what that devourer is, uh, how he can get it is when he attaches himself to something that's already in you and I. But what about when Satan can't find, if he come and he can't find nothing, and he can't find anything inside him, inside you like him? What that is for me, it's a mindset. It's not, it's, it's, it's a moment, it's a snapshot, you know, when something happening and you have the opportunity to be spirit-filled or flesh-filled. You find spirit-filled and Kairos time, you see, you know what God, you know the word of God, you know what to do. I, I often tell guys, um, you know, who I meet, you know, in, in the street, when I'm out in the street or whatever, brothers that, you know, haven't been in church and want, want to know God. Everyone has a thirst for God. Everyone has a desire to for God, whether they know it or not. They, they label it as something else, but they do. I'm telling you, because I can start talking and you know, God will start to use me, say words, and these brothers will light up. But I would tell them always, I would say, look, man, if, if you never went in a church a day in your life, you you know the good to do. You know the good to do because the spirit is always speaking. The spirit is speaking and it's telling you, no, nah, don't do that. No, 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 that's not good. You know, but we push past it because of learned behavior. Things that we done that um that we adapted to when we was in the struggle, when we was doing whatever, we 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 created this this way of doing things and it got us through then. You know, so we thinking that that's the norm, but it's not. Now, and again, we'll all be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I hope this is making sense to you because it show is for me because at the end of the day, Kairos time is the time that is God's time. And I definitely want to be moving in God's time. And then I know you do too. Um, Felicia says, she said, be concerned. She be she said like, like, be concerned when your flesh starts to make sense to you. <laughs> that is true. Be concerned when your flesh starts telling you, and it starts to make sense. Oh, that makes sense, you know. Um, be concerned, really, 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 really be 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 concerned because when my flesh, it's the flesh. It's nothing good in the flesh. I mean, come on now. And start working you up and, and you get all hyped up and everything and all this stuff going on with the flesh. We know. And so I think Paul said, the good I know to do, I don't do. And the good I, I shouldn't do, I do. Just raise my hand. <laughs> How about you? Come on now. So we're talking about Carol's time. So let's get to this. Let's get to this. All right. So. I'm gonna start. I had a question. I had, how do I know I'm in Cairo's time in my day to day? In my day to day, how do I know I'm in Cairo's time? Cairo's time, I put divine delay, Cairo's time equals divine delay before a spiritual reveal to my life's itch issues. Listen to that. Cairo's time is a divine delay before a spiritual reveal to my life's issues, to what's going on right then and there. I mean, sometimes it's like this, sometimes it's over a period of time. And I'm gonna share with you right now, um, I, I'm, I, I'm in a divine delay. In my life right now, um, there's an issue that's going on and oh my God, I am so trying not to reach in there and do something. I'm trying not to just make something happen. I believe that, I believe that God, God has, our life is so known by God that whatever we encounter, I'm certain, I'm certain, as sure enough as I'm sitting here that it didn't get past, no matter what we encounter. And in us encountering it, sit in that divine delay, so that you can get that spiritual reveal to whatever issue it is. Sit in it. 
It's hard. Everybody can't do it. And even sometimes we got to know when we when we're when we are acting and it's not God. And one of the ways that helped me is that I always say, is it something that God delight in? What does God delight in? What does God, what does it say God delight in? What are some of the things that God loves? That's why being in his word, having study time, spending time with him, meditating on his word, you know, and obeying and applying his word. All these things lead to us being stronger during these Kairos times when divine delay happens and you have to sit before you get that spiritual reveal. That's that's a good point right there. I thought that was a huge point. And it really, really, when I when I was just studying and I say, like, well, well, what's Cairo's time and what's happening? And just God just revealed to me that, thank you, thank you, Pastor. That um uh I asked for the scripture and I, I just got it. I'm gonna read it to you in a minute. Um divine delay, Cairo's time, divine delay before a spiritual reveal to life's issues. Now, during this delay, I must be spiritually discerning my response. Spiritually discerning something is an inside out thing. So when in that delay, instead of just acting out on my, my emotions, acting out, acting out on my emotions and just impulsively, like we said, acting out impulsively, I must be spiritually discerning my response. I must be spiritually discerning my of uh, discerning my response, John 14, 3. It says, Satan has no hold on me, nothing he can use against me. That's John 14, 30. Understand that Satan has no hold on me, nothing he can use against me. Ooh, that's huge, family. That is huge. Why? It's like, it's like my my testimony about uh drugs or whatever like that then all the things are going on when i am transparent and i share them things when i'm alone or if i stumble or, or if i slip or whatever happens you know what satan often will come around yeah you know you you just did some you he can't they know <laughs> can't use that one you follow me because they know so he can't use that against me, but he can't find anything in anything in me that he can use against me. Oh my God, I don't like that. I'm saying that again. Satan has no hold on me, nothing he can use against me. No hold on me. That is good. That's John. I want y'all to get that. That's John 1430. Write that down and you know, let that be part of your study time because that is good. That is something good. Because I know I am. All right, my next bullet, here we go. Then I put Kronos time. I put Kronos time, which is for me, the clock, the world time. We're on world frequency, world time. I put Kronos time equals react naturally, looking for instant gratification. Looking for instant gratification. <laughs> react naturally. React naturally looking for instant gratification because the world is all about that. Ain't no divine delay. I need that now. Come on, let's get this. Let's just happen now. Everything. Um, a lot of times when I'm on Chronos time, I start putting a, a time frame on how something should happen. Like right now in my space, and this is for me. Um, and this is why I'm alone in this thinking right here. And that is, I just believe, with well, everybody that's, in, that's involved, I believe for myself that this is how my stance that this is a divine delay, even though everything that's happening is saying, make it move, make a move, remove it, because I can remove it. I can literally physically remove it. However, I go to this, I say, God, what do you delight in? God, God has compassion. God has compassion. And I understand that I self care is real, but I understand either God gonna be great in my life in all things. I got right. It says with God, all things are possible. 
Matthew 19, 26. All things, that means all things. And as much as I want to just make this go away, I know God wouldn't have never put it in my space if he didn't have a means of taking care of whatever it is. God never puts me a place where he's not going to, that he can't rescue me from or didn't give me the tools to, to fix, do what needs to be done, meaning the mindset, not an actual tool, but the mindset, give me the wisdom, that's the word, the wisdom to do what needs to be done for that particular thing. I think when we look at our life and all that's going on, it says the ways of man are in full view of the Lord. And when we understand that family, it can it can take a great weight off us if we if we obey, understand it, one, apply it, but believe it. But believe it. I mean, reading God's word and believing God's word is like, look, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And it's in that belief system where we build the strength the spiritual strength to and the fortitude to make it through these day-to-day -day skirmishes, these things that happen that's going to get us to the big picture of what God intended for, for us as humanity, and that's love one another, talk, uh, share about him, you know, have compassion on one another. If each of us in our own little space went out and show love and, and try to walk this thing and allow God to use us and, and be on Kairos time, be on God's time, meaning being able to be in that divine delay as we are working with someone who might be, you know, just not actually responding right now. And sometimes things can seem like they are out of our pay grade. This is something that I use like at where I work. A lot of times I work with things that are literally beyond my pay grade. What I mean by that, there are therapists <laughs> that handles these things. However, we get we get caught in positions where we have to be we have to confront these 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 situations. We have to confront these situations. And in confronting these situations, I will say something, man, that's above my pay grade. And God will say it's not above his. God, God, God can work it out. How I know, because again, God has used me, put me in this place. I'd be like, how did I get here? Because God can do what he want to do, when he want to do it, how he want to do it, where he want to do it, because he's sovereign. And so that's me believing God. I'm telling you, so if we look at our life and what God has already done in our life, we will get to see how sovereign God is, how trustworthy God is, how on time God is. It's just that we have to be in his timing, Kairos time. We can't be in Kronos time, can't be on that, that react naturally looking for instant gratification. We just can't. And here's why we, here's, here's, here's the scripture that we use that shows this struggle that we go through. Can you pull up slide one for me, please? We was using it earlier. I just want to, um, we used it in other services. And I just want to revisit this um, just briefly. It says, Galatians 5, 16 says, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit, seek him and be responsive to his guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts. Keep it up. Let's look at this family. Let's everybody look at this. It says, but I say, Walk habitually. Make it a habit. The word I see in there is habit. The root word of that is habit. Make it a habit. Make it a bit. Walk habitually. Walk. Make it a habit. Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Now look at this. Seek Him. Seek Him. You know to seek Him. You that mean I'm intentional. Seek Him. Conscious. Seek Him, and be responsive to His guidance. Sometimes his guidance might tell us something that we ain't trying to hear. And so we end up not being responsive. But to, if we do these things, it says, and then we will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature. Do you know the sinful nature has a desire? Just like you have a desire to do something good, the sinful nature has a desire to take you off course. And it says, which the, the, the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for what God, for God and his precepts. 
The simple nature had no regard for, I have no regard for God and his precepts. You can take it down. And we have to know that about our sinful nature and that we all have a sinful nature. And, and sometimes being in ministry a long time or sometimes knowing God's word or I don't know, sometimes just the whole emotional piece. I, you know, when people come to me and and walk on me and say, uh, oh, oh, I know you. You you go to the soul factory. I'm a member too. I'll be looking. I'll be like, okay. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> Nothing but it. look. Let me be honest with you. Everybody can't go to the soul factory. Everybody don't go to the soul factory. And that that you know that's what, and people that came didn't stay. You know, and some that came left and doing great things. This is not a bad thing, but I'm saying I've heard language. You know, where people say, "Oh, I, I can't go there and everything." Well, I understand why because we change lives from the inside out, and so it starts with us first. And so because we have always been a ministry of integrity, not that everybody is hidden. We're not the best things at sliced bread, even though sometimes I think so. And, and we, have, we have a standard that we are held to. And in that walk, in that walk, that sinful nature, I recognize it and I call it out and I'm transparent about it. I often say, if I'm teaching, I say, hey, I've allowed things outside of me, a tattoo inside of me. I wasn't like Jesus in John in John 14, 30. I wasn't like that. Uh, Satan has no hold on me, nothing he can use against me. Hey, it was a time when he had a hold on me and he was using it against me. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So what I'm telling you, if we exalt God, if we pray and we do all the things that we know to do, turn to his word daily, meditate, study God's truth, Believe, obey, and apply, and share. I'm telling you, these are all things that keep us God-focused on Cairo's time. We have to make sure that we God-focused. Pull up second slide. I hope this makes sense. I, I'm, I really believe it, do, and I really feel like we're really getting somewhere. Now, the goal tonight, I want, I'm on, I want to reiterate, it was like, how do I know I'm in Cairo's time in my day-to-day? -day? One, I got, I'm going to know Take that down for a minute. Why? Because I want to bring us back and make sure we're following along. I want to make sure that we understand the way we're going to know is one, we're going to have, we're going to spend time with God. We're going to spend the time with him, turn to his word daily, meditate, study God's truth, believe, obey what we obey and apply what we learn. The other one was, um, I'm going to, the way I'm going to know how to, how, how do I know I am in Cairo's time is that I'm going to realize Divine delay and what it means to be in divine delay. Cairo's time is divine delay before a spiritual reveal into my life's issues. So I know I'm in Cairo's time when I understand that, hey, I need to be still and sit with God and see this spiritual reveal. How am I see it? From the inside out. We, the spirit speaks to us, family. We can't, we can't push aside what the spirit is saying to us when it's not exactly what we, what we want to hear. We can't go in with a prescriptive or uh, like a prescriptive and descriptive mindset of what it should be like. The spirit is like the wind. You, you can't, the spirit of God, is, is, God does what he does, when he does, how he does, the way he wanted and everything. But I promise you on the other side of it is deliverance for you. It's a spiritual reveal that will, will bless your life. All right, so again, how do I know I am in Cairo's time in my day-to-day? -day? Every day you get up, every day you go out, being God-focused, being intentional about walking in his word is very key. It's very key. Being intentional is the key word for me, being intentional. And that's, that's not always easy to do. And the reason sometimes is because everything is going on. You got kids, you got to get ready. You got bills that are due. You got to take care of this. You got to take care of that. But I promise if we take the time, sit, sit. And I don't, I don't mean it's literally like just sit because if I sit, I ain't, I ain't going to get paid if I don't get, get to the job. But I'm talking about sit. Sit with God in my thoughts. And how do I sit with God? I take God's truth and I sit with them in my mind as I move through the day. And i have to be intentional about allow, allowing a bunch of stuff to get into my space that will distract me from what God is trying to reveal to me in this divine delay. 
that I might be experiencing or that we could be experiencing, however you want to say it. All right, pull it up. Pull the second, second slide up, please. We read this, Felicia, use this scripture. I like this scripture. I want to revisit it as we understand how do I know I'm in Cairo's time in my day-to-day. -day. All right. For, for whoever, this is Matthew 13, um, 12 through 15. For whoever has spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word, you have spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. Listen to what it's saying, fam. Listen to this. We will be richly and abundantly supplied. Supplied what? I'm believing supplied whatever we need for that moment, for that time, that thought. You will be richly Supply the wisdom, more wisdom, abundantly supplied. Then it says, but whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word. Take that down. How do I devalue God's word? Please, I'm sorry. Devalue God's word by not responding. <laughs> I devalue God's word by not applying it. I devalue God's word by actually seeing it, then walking away like I never, like it, like it didn't mean nothing. Devalue God's word. That's that's something you know. Let's think about. Do you know? Have you devalue God's word? All right. Let's start back at twelve four. Whoever, and I'm gonna go all the way through. I'm gonna stop at. I'm going to stop by 15. For whoever has spiritual wisdom because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word, even what he has will be taken away from him. Will be taken away from him. That's, that speaks to me. How, what devalue? Even what he, even the wisdom he had will be taken from. Ooh, just the thought of that has got me. Just I got several thoughts going just because of that. The thought of that it it will be taken away from him. This is the reason I speak to the crowds in parable. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. He said because while having the power of seeing, they do not see, and while having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, okay, this is the prophecy of, of Isaiah. Prophecy is something that was told in the past. It's prophesied. Here it is. You will hear and keep on hearing, but never understand. And you will look and keep on looking, but never comprehend. This is why. For the nation's hearts have grown hard, and their ears they hardly hear and they have tightly closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see in their eyes, they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn to me and I would heal them spiritually. All right, take it down. That's it right there, family. Turn to him. How do we turn to God? By being intentional. God loves us so much. And the scripture, God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Right? When we understand, we, we can't. I don't, I, I don't think we're humanly able to understand to the degree that God's love, that God loves us. And how he has made provisions for us in this life. We worry about things that we don't have to worry about. Because God has already taken care of it. When Christ died. Christ died for it all, y'all. He died for it all. The only way I can see me. I'm going to use me. Not understanding that is for me not to be grateful. 
for the deliverance that I know have taken place in this in this body. And the things that God has given me and done for me is the only way that I can't understand that God so loved the world. It's a song say, um, you thought I was worth saving. That song, but then he say, he say, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. Come on. Every time I hear that song, he say, you thought I was to die for. You thought I was to die for. You thought I was to die for. Do you understand that? So God is going to give us everything we need, all the wisdom we need when we turn to him, when we repent of the ways we know that are not good, the things we know we shouldn't do. God has already created a way for us to come to him with a clean, with a, with a, with a, with a transparent heart. That our hearts, can, the circumcision takes place in our heart where the old man dies, where the old man dies and you're a new creation. We are born again. It looks like something. It's spiritual. It looks like something. Yes, you can be born again. And so when we understand that, it's just, it's just, it's just so friend. I'm getting to a place. I told you I'm walking right now in this divine delay. It is tough. Some People close to me, you know, we are, we are, we are on the same page. We want some of the same things, but we're seeing how to go about it differently. We're, we're seeing how to go about it differently, but God is in control. God is going to give all clarity because for me, I'm going to focus on God and I'm going to sit in this divine delay and I'm going to wait for the spiritual reveal to this life's issue. So one of the things, okay, I got a movie. One of the things that, I am not going to read that. Let's go to the uh, slide number three. I had some I was going to read, I'm not going to read. All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15. For the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, Therefore, all died. And he died for all so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised, raised for their sake. Take it down. If you've been baptized, you, you did it, you did it, you did it. That is symbolic of, of Christ's death and resurrection. But me knowing the spirit that I walked in, the old nature, and all that, when Christ died, Christ, because God, let me let me just say it like this. When God see, when God don't see me as he as I see myself, God sees me through, he sees Christ. Christ right there. I'm right here. Christ right there. God sees Christ. Because of that, I'm so grateful because I could, God could never look upon this simple body of mine, this simple ways of mine. No man, I didn't know. God knows us, girl. You ever seen them? You strike a match. If God looked at us, strike a match. That's you. That's me. That's me. If God was to put his eyes right on us, that's my belief. You know, I don't, I, I'm just telling you. So, in that one died, you know, we, when he died, he died for all of us. There's no guilt and shame. There's nothing. And the adversary will constantly come at us with it. But when we understand that it's done, he said, it is finished. And let his love flow through us. Make the corrections within, no matter what you, let me say this. If you're intentional, intentional about doing it, 
No, from your heart, from your soul. If you really want it, God knows. Yeah, it's tough, but you can get there. I promise you, I'm not walking. It's tough. Every day is a battle. I constantly, my knees probably bruised because in the spirit realm, I'm probably up, down, up, low, up, up. It's, it just probably look crazy because I got to keep asking for forgiveness. But when you, when you intentional and you intentional about going that, you get good. You get good at understanding Cairo's time. You get good at knowing God is your prayer. You get good at responding to God when God, when something is happening. You get good at, at showing people who God is, at imitating Christ, because that is who we are supposed to be imitating. We're supposed to be imitating Christ. We're supposed to be imitating Christ. We're supposed to be showing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. We're supposed to be showing these things in our walk. And that's where God is working on us. That's where all this divine delay happens. The divine delay, you know, a spiritual reveal, um, the, the delay before a spiritual reveal and our life's issues. You know, in that, in that delay, you know what we should be doing? Trying to be uh, patient, kind, showing some self-control. I'm telling you, we are a new creation and we should walk in it. Let's pull up um, slide four for me. I might still have time to read that. Thing. Slide four. This is good for me. I, I am telling you, I, this, when I read, I read this you know, some years ago, but I love this. It's Genesis 5, 24. Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God 300 years after the birth of Methuselah and had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And in reverent fear and obedience, Enoch walked with God. And he was not found among men because God took him away to be home with him. Take it down. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Lord. Oh, I can't fathom. I can't imagine what it looks like. To be able to walk with God so close like that, that you don't get to experience death that, that you just get. God just say, no, come with me. Oh, my goodness. So now I want to tell you something. Just the revelation that I got when I was studying, but when I I got it, since we got that book, Sit, Walk, Sit, Walk, Stand. Family, you're missing it. Sit, walk, stand by uh, Watchman, Watchman Nee. When it says he walked with God, he sat with God. He was walking with him, but it was spiritual. He was similar in his life. He probably just, it was just. Sometimes I'm going to be honest with you. I have thoughts of being a monk until I started thinking about the flesh. I'm just saying, I can't be lying to y'all. I, I'm like, I wonder what it's like to be a monk. Because sometimes, Spending my time with God is so good. I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to. I'm going to just sit. I'm going to be like the angels singing and praising. Right before this, this, this um, broadcast, I was just singing and it was praising and worshiping and everything. It, it was just so good. And sometimes I be getting up in the morning and I go and I'm driving to work. I just want to be there. But nah, you got to be in the world. Wow. But when Enoch, they say he walked habitually with God. Wow. Wow. That's, that, that just spoke to me. I love that scripture. So I'm going to read this. This is one of, from one of my devotionals. I'm going to read this, and we're going to be wrapping up. So this is says, getting, getting into God's stride. And this is where I got the scripture from, because it said Enoch walked with God. All right, it says, the true test of a person's spiritual life and character is not what he does in extraordinary moments of life, but what he does during the ordinary times when there is nothing tremendous or exciting happen. One time this guy told me, he said, he said, Dave, he said, what matters is what you do in private. He had came over, he was a friend of the family. Um, um, my wife and his wife was real close, his wife passed. Um, and he came over one time and he said, Dave, what you doing? I said, man, I was studying. You know, and he said, wow, man, he said, it matters what you do in private. That always sticks out to me. 
Then it says, a person's worth is revealed in his attitude towards the ordinary things of life when he is not under the spotlight. It is, it is painful work to get in step with God and to keep pace with him. <laughs> it means getting your second wind spiritually. In learning to walk with God, there is always the difficulty, difficulty of getting into his stride. But once we have done, once we have done so, the only characteristic that exhibits itself is the very life of God himself. The individual person is merged into a, pers into a personal oneness with God and God's stride and his power alone are exhibited. I have wrote born again. Born again, that's the goal. And it's doable. It is doable. It is doable. All right. It goes on to say, it is, it is difficult to get into stride with God because as soon as we start walking with him, we find that his pace surpassed us, surpassed us before we have even taken three steps. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And when I keep hearing, when it says keep in stride with him, I keep saying sit with him. I keep saying being in that space with him. And when God is moving, you know, being in Cairo's time, I keep saying that. He has different ways. He has different ways of doing things. And we have, we have to be trained and disciplined in his ways. It is said of Jesus, he will not fail nor, nor be discouraged. This is why. Because he never worked from his own individual standpoint, but always worked from the standpoint of his father. Jesus said, I does nothing outside of what the father tell me. Guess what? We should be saying, Dave Thompson, you should be saying, I does nothing outside of what Jesus tells me. I should be one with Christ as he was one with the father. Oh my goodness, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And there is the battle. That's that, that, and all that trying to do that. But I promise you, when that thing is, 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 the, is on our mind and I'm intentional about it, we can do it. I've done it today. I stayed away from a lot of things that I heard that flesh calling me to. And so if I can continue to do it, I'll get even better at it. I'm what I'm telling you, family, can we be available to be used by God when He wants? Can we shut our life down so that God can use our life for His purpose for the big picture? For he said that he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Can we die to ourselves? Can we be that? Can we be that 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 hug for God in the earth? Can we be that kind word for God in the earth? Can we have self-control so nobody can see him, not us see him? Then it says, and we must learn to do the same. Spiritual truth is learned through the atmosphere that surrounds us not through intellectual re reasoning, not through intellectual reasoning. It is God's spirit that changes the atmosphere of our way of looking, looking at things. And then things begin to be possible, which before were impossible. Getting into God's stride means nothing less than oneness with him. It takes a long time to get there, but keep at it. Don't give up because the pain is intense right now. Get on with it. And before long, you will find that you have a new vision and a new purpose. Man, I thought that was good. I thought that was good because it talked about being one with God, Christ being one with God, but we being one with Christ. I promise you, family, right now, God, God is, is so reaching down to us. We so can be one with Christ. It is just like if you're going through something right now, if, you, if, if, if you, whatever you're going through, I want you to settle down for me. I want you to really think about it. Something that always crosses my mind and when I'm worried and everything, Dave, you know, when it's all said and done, this world going to keep you to moving, man. It's going to keep on going. So at the end of the day, Dave, you know, put your best foot forward towards God, man. And I'm telling you, family, walk, walk with God, sit with him, sit with him, meaning make it a conscious, make it an unconscious thought, Uncon it just happens, yes, make it an unconscious thought, and God, 
God reveals himself to us. God will, he said he will give us his wisdom. He said he will, he will supply all our needs. He said, lay your burdens at my feet. These are all true. How we know, look where we are. We, we are some privileged people. We are, as it pertains to what's going on in the world. So I don't want to um, minimize any struggles or anything anybody going through. I want you to know, though, that it did get past God. God is here for you. God loves us. He said it because he said, I, give my, I gave my, my only begotten son. He loves us. And how you know? Because look at you. Look at you. I, I just, I just, I'm just telling you, God is revealing himself to us and we're not even saying, see, Cairo's time is before us and we don't even be known when Cairo's time is before us. We don't clone those time. We're on this world, this world's frequency, this world's timing. And we have to let it go. We have to let it go and let God do all that he's going to do through us and let God be all that he can be for us. We don't have to do, we don't have to do anything, y'all, but sit with him. Sit with him. He's going to supply all our needs. But those needs are going to be the things that he desired for us. When you desire the things that God desired, watch how good life is. You'll know. Life just started lining up. His word is true. You reap what you sow in all aspects. But I promise you, it's nothing like the relationship with God. It's no love like the love of God. No one can love us better than God loves us. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. God is there. So let's just reach out to him. Let's, 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 let's think on him. And as we go through the day and as we confront it with our day-to-day -day things, and as we sit in this Kairos time, that delay before that spiritual reveal, we just say, thank you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We give you the most highest praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Because, Lord, we know without you, Lord God, where will we be? Without your son, without us being able to be born again, where will we be? Where will we be? So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for every breath we take. We thank you for everything, Lord God, that we have, everything that, that you brought our way, Lord God. But none of it. It's all rubbish as it pertains to you, Lord God. Let me have your, just know your presence. Let me be with you, God. For if I'm with you, I can have all that, all that is, is, is nothing. I can have anything. You can give me anything. You're so rich, God. You have everything, Lord God. It's nothing that you that we need that you can't give us, God. And we thank you, Lord. But more than what you can give us, Lord God, what can I be here in this space that, Lord God, that will bless you, Lord God? I want to bless you. Do you want to bless the Lord? Do you want to bless the Lord? Just love him and accept his free gift of his son. Refresh, accept his free gift of of his grace, his mercy. And he has enough grace and mercy for anything. It's, it's, it's so much we can't even fathom. So don't, don't be condemned no more. Don't be beat down. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you've done. I don't care about none of that. None of it do I care about. Know that God loves you. Know that his grace and his mercy is, 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 is for you too. You know, but we must love him. We must believe that he's real. And we must believe in his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that he did die for the sins of the world. And when you can believe that outside of whatever this noise is that's telling us it's not true, that's whatever this noise is that's trying to give us all these different type of things to believe in, just know this to be true. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He said, lay your burdens at my feet. He said, I have all that you need. Come to me. If you lift me up, I will draw all men to me, all men to me. So as we go, let's lift them up. How we lift them up? We tell people about the goodness of the Lord. And that's what I'm telling you right now. You're looking at a walking miracle. Yes. Now I ain't meaning that to lift me up nowhere. No, I'm telling you, God saved me. And so I turned to him and I believe Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. I believe he died for my life. And I believe he's here and I believe he's walking with me and he comforts me through his Holy Spirit. He corrects me. He directs me and everything. He does the same for you. But do you recognize the Kairos times? Do you recognize it? And even if you don't recognize it, just try to get yourself to a place where you're not just looking at all that's coming at you. And sit with God 
and just thank them for what you do have. Because right now, what you do have probably is more than something somebody else has. I see it all the time. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your word tonight. I pray, Lord God, that deliverance happened tonight with your word, Lord God. I pray that they heard you, not me. That whatever truth you 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 were revealing in their lives, that they were to hear to, Lord God, and they will they will see differently the things that were confusing. You have given them clarity. That your wisdom tonight, Lord God, be what they heard, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for such a time, great privilege and opportunity. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Hallelujah.